the world of web development and web applications is changing and it's changing faster every day. If you've ever been out to Gmail or various Twitter clients, all the way to shopping carts, you've seen how interactivity has begun to switch more toward the client. You're seeing dynamic interactions with web applications without doing long postbacks to the server, but rather it seems almost instantaneous. This is done by using web services and it's done by interacting with these web services using JavaScript. So when we look at the web API, we're going to talk about why people use web services, what benefits they can bring you, and what are some of the drawbacks, because they're not right for every application. We're also going to look at how you can create your own web services using the web API that's rolled into the MVC framework, and you'll find that your MVC knowledge will transfer right over. As web technologies become more open and more interactive, then it's more important than ever to figure out how we're going to control who gets to our application and what they can do once they get there. This is what we mean when we talk about authentication and authorization. Well, the MVC framework has a number of methods in store for you to actually control who can get to your application and what they can do once they get there. Some of these methods go all the way back to the early days of ASP.NET, but we're also going to take a look at some MVC-specific ways to use attributes to authenticate our users and figure out who they are. We're going to look at a powerful membership provider that comes with MVC4 that will allow us to do authorization against roles or specific users. And we'll also take a look at an emergent authentication pattern in terms of claims. Uh, how do we let people log in from Google? How do we let people log in from Facebook or from Microsoft and use claims to verify who they are and what they have access to? All these things are very easy to do in MVC4.